Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was the nightingale and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Night's candles are burnt out, and jock and day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Yon light is not daylight, I know it, I. It is some meteor that the sun exhales to be to thee this night a torchbearer and light thee on thy way to Mantua, therefore... Stay yet, thou needst not to be gone. Let me be ta'en, let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I say yon gray is not the morning's eyes. Tis but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow, nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death and welcome, Juliet wills it so. How's it, my soul? Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. Hi, hence. Be gone away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing sharps. Some say the lark makes sweet division. This doth not so, for she divideth us. Some say the lark and loathed toad changed eyes. Oh, now I would they have changed voices too, since arm from arm that voice doth us affray, hunting thee hence with hunts up to the day. Oh, now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Madam! Yes? Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Be wary. Look about. Then window. Let day in. And let life out. Farewell. Farewell, one kiss, and I'll descend. Art thou gone so? Love, lord, a husband, friend. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. Oh, by this count I shall be much in years, ere I again behold my Romeo. Farewell. I will omit no opportunity that may convey my greetings, love, to thee. Oh, thinkest thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all these woes shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee, thou thou art below, as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. Either my eyesight fails, but thou looks pale. And trust me, love, in my eyes so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu, adieu. Oh, fortune, fortune, all oh, men call thee fickle. If thou art fickle, what dost thou with him that is renowned for faith? Be fickle, fortune, for then I hope thou will not keep him long, but send him back. Why, how now, Juliet? Who is that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late or up so early? What unaccustomed cause procures her here? Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst not make him live, therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief still shows some want of wit. You let me weep for such a feeling loss. So shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Feeling so the loss, I cannot choose but ever weep the friend. Well, girl, thou weepest not so much for his death as that the villain lives that slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. Villain and he be many miles asunder. God pardon him, I do, with all my heart. And yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. That is because the traitor murderer lives. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands, would none but I might avenge my cousin's death. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Often one man to a hero, same man as one gate doth live. 
shall give him such an unaccustomed dream that he shall soon get to job our company, and then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I shall never be satisfied to groan there till I behold him. Dead, is my poor heart for a king's many vexed? Madam, if you could find but a man to bear poison, I would temper it. But Romeo should, upon receipt thereof, soon sleep in quiet. Oh, how my heart abhors to hear the name, and cannot come to him. For wreck thy love I bore my cousin upon his body that slaughtered him. <laughs> find thou to me, and I'll find such a man. But now I'll tell thee joyful doings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. Where are they? I beseech your ladyship. Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child, one who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy, that thou expectest not, nor I looked not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn. The gallant young and noble gentleman, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed, ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet, and when I do, I swear, it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. These are news indeed. Here comes your father, tell him so yourself, and see how he will take it at your hands. When the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew, but for the sunset of my brother's sun, it rains down right. How now, a conduit, girl? What, still in tears, ever more showering in one little body? Thou counterfeit'st a bark, a sea, a wind, for still thy eyes, which I may call the sea, do ebb and flow with tears. The bark thy body is, sealing in this salt flood, the winds thy sighs, who, raging with thy tears, and they with them, without a sudden calm, will overset thy tempest-tossed body. How now, wife, have, have you delivered to her our decree? Ay, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. Soft, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How, will she none? Does she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How now? How now? Chop logic. What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud. Mistress Minion, you, thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds, but fettle your fine joints gainst Thursday next, or go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Out, you green sickness carrion, out, you baggage, you tallow face. Fie, fie, what are you mad? Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang the young baggage! Disobedient wretch, I tell thee what. Get thee to church on Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see this one is one too much, and that we have a curse in having her. Out on her hilding. God in heaven, bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom, hold your tongue. Good prudence, smatter with your gossips, go. I speak no treason. Oh, God, ye God, then. May not one speak? Peace, you mumbling fool. Utter your gravity or a gossip's bowl, for here we need it not. You are too hot. God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company, 
Still, my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, a fair domestic, youthful, and noble, nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched, puling fool, a whining mammoth in her fortune's tender to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But as you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will. You shall not house with me. Look to it. Think on it. I do not use to jest. Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart. Advise. And you be mine. I'll give you to my friend. And you be not hang, beg, starve, die in the streets. For by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. Nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it. Bethink you, I'll not be forsworn. Is there no pity that sitting, sitting in the clouds has that sees into the bottom of my grief? Heath. Oh, sweet there, my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Or if you do not, it makes the bridal bed in that Tim monument where Tibbled lies. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do not thou do as thou th do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. With thee. Oh God, oh nurse, how shall this be prevented? My husband is on earth. My faith in heaven. How shall that faith return again to earth, unless that husband sendeth me from heaven by leaving earth? Comfort me. Counsel me. Alack, alack that heaven should practice stratagems upon so soft a subject as myself. What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse. Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing, that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, since the case so as it stands, as now it doth. I think it best you married with the county. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish clout to him, an eagle, madame. Hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. Beshrew my very heart. I think you were happy in the second match, for it excels your first. As if it did not, your first is dead. Or twere as good he were as living here, and you no use of him. Speakest thou from thy heart? And from my soul, too. Or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in, and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my father to Lawrence's cell to make confession and be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient damnation! Almost a wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue which she hath praised him with above compare so many thousand times. Go, counselor! Thou in my bosom henceforth shall be twain. I'll to the friar to know his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. 